Hello, hello, good afternoon. It's Monica from Life is Art, and this is the Sunday 3.30 p.m. demo at the It's a Real Page Turner online crop. <clears throat> Just getting my video going so I can see who's watching. If you're joining me live, just say hello or howdy so I know you're here. And if you're watching later on replay, you can say replay. We are going to be looking at a special that's currently available with Close to My Heart. And um, it's um, a seasonal one and it's a gnome one. So if you haven't seen it yet, it just went live the beginning of August, and it is called Gnomes for All Seasons Autumn. And so, um, hey, Michelle, nice to see you're watching. Heather is here too. Hello, and Joanne, and Mary, awesome. And um, so this is a really pretty autumn collection, and I love the little hedgehog and squirrels that are on here. There's some gnomes. We've got all sorts of fun titles and things. And this is the sticker sheet that goes with the collection. This collection also introduces us to a few of the new colors for the upcoming year. Um, and uh, those colors sold out really fast <laughs> the first day of August. But there are more coming on Monday. And there are more coming every day after that, they said. And so the new colors that are in here, there is um, pumpkin, limeade, acorn, and what else is in there that's new? Mm, limeade, pumpkin, acorn. Yes, those are the three. And so um, that's exciting. So because of this collection they made those inks available to everyone and the card stocks and things so you can go ahead and take a look at those online on the website hey Pamela nice to see you're watching oh Heather yeah the the um the internet webs hasn't been good this weekend I think it's probably all the storms that have been going on I know Quebec is out of power I hope they've gotten some of it back going and um yeah so lots of fun things going on in this collection. Let me just grab some of the pattern paper here so you can take a look. I've got some of them. I've already been cut up. <laughs> but there is this pattern paper that has words all over it. All sorts of, for those of you who like word searches, we've got family gathering, pause and reflect, traditions, priceless, Memories, Gourd, Autumn, or Autumn is in the Air, um, Flying South, Caramel Apples, Grateful Thanksgiving Cornucopia, uh, Sweater Weather, Corn Maze, Flannel, all sorts of things are hidden in amongst all those letters. Then there's this lovely zip strip with arrows. The back side is this really fun stripe with all the beautiful colors. Then we have this one, which is a lovely leafy design, a nice sort of mixed media feel to that with a beautiful sunflower zip strip. And then the back side is this limeade plaid. We always love a good plaid. And then, of course, we have this one that has the lovely little squirrels and hedgehogs and acorns and corn and pumpkins and gourds and leaves and sunflowers. And so many things, little mushrooms and apples, lots of gorgeousness, and then a lovely zip strip with some leaves and acorns. And then on the back side, we have the little gnomes. So we have gnomes on stumps, gnomes with rakes, gnomes with sunflowers, so cute, little sweaters, and then the gourds and the pumpkins, piles of wood, lots of fun things on there too. So those are the papers and the stickers for this collection. So I thought I would give you a little quick look at those before we started creating. And we're going to create a 12 by 12 uh, layout. And we're going to start with a white daisy base. But before we get into that, I also want to show you the stamp set um, that is the Gnomes for Autumn scrapbooking stamp set. 
and it comes with uh, three big titles, Happy Harvest, Autumn Splendor, Gather with Grateful Hearts, then there's a pumpkin, there's a couple leaves, there's a pie, there's mushrooms, there's sunflowers, lots of good things on there, and you can also get it with the thin cuts, as you can see I've been using my thin cuts, so <laughs> we've got those, and so before I get started with my layout, I want to show you what I'm doing with my thin cuts. So I've got some pumpkin and some, let me see, what else have I got? I've got the big sunflowers, I've got leaves, I've got the smaller sunflowers, I've got other leaves, more leaves. <laughs> I was having fun. Uh, we've got a little mushroom, we've got another pumpkin. We've got some smaller sunflowers, big sunflowers. You know, when you're planning on doing a layout, sometimes you just need to have a lot of embellishments ready. And you can see that some of these have had some color added to them. And I just wanted to show you how I was doing that. First thing I needed was my water brush. And then I also need some ink. So let's start off with our pumpkins here. And um, so my first pumpkin here, I've already colored it with some orange, but I'm going to add a little bit more orange to it. But I want to show you the technique that I'm using. So I've got my pumpkin ink, and I'm just going to give it a good old squeeze. And what that's going to do is it's going to transfer some ink to the lid of my um, stamp pad. I'm going to put my stamp pad way over there. I'm going to put my ink over here. And that way I won't accidentally put that lid back on while there's still water in it. I'm going to use my water brush to add some water into here. Now, this is not fancy watercolor painting, okay? We're using plain white daisy paper. We're not using watercolor paper. We're going to use really simple techniques to just get some color on here, okay? It doesn't have to be artistic. It's just putting water and ink onto our paper. Okay, so don't stress about it. So what you're going to do is I'm going to take my water brush and I'm actually going to start at the bottom of each little section of the pumpkin and I'm going to put my brush down and I'm going to push it down sideways. Okay, so we're going to push it down and then we're just going to drag it up. And when I do that, it pretty much fills that entire section of the pumpkin with, with the inky goodness I don't care that I've gone outside the lines. This is watercolor. It's very forgiving. And so you've just painted one whole section. Grab some more ink. We're going to do the same thing. Put it down and drag it up. Leave a white space. Doesn't matter. Go to the next section. And this one we're going to do it twice because it's the middle one. And then we're going to go to the next one. We're going to set it down and drag it up just like that. Okay. Now we've gone ahead and got that whole pumpkin done. I can add a little more ink if I want a little more color. If I, you know, don't think it's orangey enough for me, I can go over it again, just like that. Very cool. It's super simple. Don't stress about adding ink with a water brush, okay? I'm going to set those aside so they can kind of dry and do their thing. And then let's bring in this sunflower here. So sunflowers are yellow, but they also have a little bit of orange. You can even, I heard somebody say you can get purple sunflowers. All sorts of fun colors. We're going to do the same technique. We're going to splat our brush down, and then we're going to drag it up to the tip. We're not going to necessarily do every single one. We're not necessarily going to follow the lines. We're just going to get some color on there, just like that. Okay. And then we can even do the same thing for leaves. You can see here I've got some leaves. Let's bring in this little guy here. And we're just going to go ahead and add some orange on there. That's all we do. Just <laughs> easy peasy. Okay. So I think we're done with the orange. And now we're just going to squeeze some water out of our water brush and keep brushing on our tissue until it comes out clean. Once there's no color coming, you know you've cleaned your brush. Now I'm going to take this same cloth and clean up my lid so that I have no water left in there before I go ahead and put that back on my stamp pad. Ready to use again. Now let's add a little bit of yellow to our sunflowers. So I've got my honey butter ink here. I'm going to give it a squeezy squeeze. Make sure I've got some ink 
going on the lid there. Going to squeeze a little more. I mean, it's hard to see yellow because it's a light color. Again, putting my stamp pad way over there. Going to put my lid way over here. Pick up some of that yellow. And then I'm going to do the exact same treatment. Just splat and drag. We'll call this the splat and drag method. We're just going to splat and drag some yellow all the way around. Just like that. And I've used the die cuts for this normally, as you know. I like fussy cutting. But I decided that since I had the die cuts, um, I didn't actually order the die cuts. They came in our convention launch bundle. Um, since I had them, I decided I might as well go ahead and use them. And so here we are. We're using them. So there, we've just added some yellow. Anywhere that we didn't have orange, we've added some yellow. Keeping it simple, just adding some nice color. Let's do the other one. So you thought you were coming here to watch a layout, and here I am painting. <laughs> Getting some color on there. So we're just going to go all the way around, adding color. Another trick that you can use is if you don't want to use water or brush to add color to your things, you can take the back of your stamp and use it to add color. And what I recommend for that is, say I wanted to do this little leaf, I would stamp it in black or the color that I'm going to use, clean your stamp, then flip it over and load it on your block backwards so the flat part that you would normally have against your block is facing out, ink it up, stamp it off on some scrap paper, even once or twice, and then use like the third generation to add some ink to your leaves. And I have done that and it looks really pretty. So let's add some little bit of yellow to a couple of these leaves here, maybe even this leaf over here. And that looks good. Okay, now we've got our little sunflowers. We can add some color to those. I'm running out of yellow. And instead of um, squishing more, I'm going to just use what I've got <laughs> and finish up these little guys. Magically, our brains will interpret yellow on these sunflowers, even if there's not a lot of yellow on there. And the thing with working with this kind of water brush is as you use it, more water comes out and that will actually make your color lighter and lighter and lighter as you paint. So there we go. We've cleaned that off. We've cleaned off our lid. And then let's bring in some acorn. We've got some acorn ink here. Give it a good squeeze. There we go. And we can add some color to some of these leaves here. So let's grab some acorn. And again, we're just splatting and dragging it along. Let's see if we can get more color on there like that. If you have a shaky hand, this works well too because you just kind of splat it down and slither it around on there and you get a lovely color going. There we go. And let's do this guy. Now, leaves are never always just one color. So you can see that I've left some bits still showing as white. I'm going to add a little bit of acorn to this as well. Our little mushrooms. There we go. Like that. And now we'll clean this off. Um, yeah, okay. I was going to say I was going to use some on the pumpkins, but I'm not. We're going to say these are fresh, pit, fresh picked pumpkins, and they're still going to have green on their vines. <laughs> fresh picked. So let's grab the scarlet and give it a squeeze because we've got some lovely scarlet in this collection. And we can add a little bit of scarlet to some of our lovely leaves here. So there, we've added a bit of scarlet to that one. And a little bit to that one. And a little bit to that one. Even add some on the tips of that one. You know, you never have too much color in the fall. People like traveling around and doing 
fall color tours because we love the colors of fall, right? And we'll just add a little bit to our mushrooms, maybe even these little dots under our mushrooms that I forgot all about when I was doing other things. There we go. Looks good. Let's give this a clean off. And I probably could have added some acorn to the center of my sunflowers, I'm just thinking, while I had that out. But that's okay. Now we're going to bring in the limeade and just add a little bit of green to the tops of our pumpkins. Isn't this fun when you've got everything all cut out and stamped and all you got to do is play with color? Super fun. This limeade is one of the new colors and it's a nice vibranty green. There we go. And we can even add a little bit of green onto some of our leaves because why not? They started out green. They could still have a little green on there. Alrighty. I keep grabbing a new tissue every time when really I could be using the same tissue a few times. <laughs> I must be greedy for tissues. Okay. And I said I was going to add a little bit of acorn to the centers of my flowers. So let's do that. Just a nice little dollop of acorn in there. Easy peasy. It's nice when you squish down on the side of that water brush that you get a nice wide because this is the small round water brush, so it's actually got a really small um, brush on it. But if you lay it down, put it on the side, you get a nice little swath of color going. There we go. Okay, so now we're going to set those aside and let them dry. I wanted to start with that because they need a moment to do their drying before we go and stick it on our layout. So just scooch those all over there. Put the lid back on our water brush. You're all hanging in there still. Good afternoon, Mum. I've got my piece of paper that I'm going to use for my base. And it's 12 by 12 white daisy. Just going to add a little bit of adhesive here in the center to stick it down so it doesn't shift all around on me. And I'm going to start with my photos, which sometimes I don't. I usually leave them till the end. So I have cut a piece of um, the acorn cardstock to 10 inches by two and a half inches. And I have printed out some photos. And these were taken at Thanksgiving at my mom and dad's house. So there's my, my dad and my mom and my brother and Justin and Joshua and Julia. And there's Joshua eating some yummy dessert and Julia eating dessert. And so these, I intended to have them about two and a half inch squares, but these two are just slightly under two and a half inches. As you can tell, the, the cardstock is filling in the space, but these two didn't quite work as squares. So I just kind of adjusted so that this one could be made bigger and this one could be made smaller. And then it all worked out. Now I should mention that this layout is inspired by one on Pinterest that was posted by Allison Davis. And so that's where I'm getting my inspiration from. It's always good. I know during crops, I give you guys um, inspiration to work from. And same goes for me. It's sometimes nice just to find some inspiration to work from. I'm going to start by adding the photos at either end and that will allow me to see how much space is left for the in-between pictures and how much gap should be left between the pictures. So I'm just going to center those like that and then I can get a little view of the amount of space and add these ones in. And so because my photos were not two and a half, my cardstock is kind of filling in the place of that amount of space that needed to be filled. And I kind of like it. 
having a little bit of cardstock there, kind of grounding the photos, and it also adds a little bit more brown, which kind of tones down like Joshua's shirt is. <laughs> it's very bright, doesn't really match the paper. But, you know, when your kids don't wear fall colors um, for Thanksgiving, then you just have to make it work with your paper. <laughs> we were talking about that during cra craft and chat. You know, sometimes do you take your kids places and take pictures of them in those places and perhaps um, dress them in certain outfits in when you go to those places so that they match your scrapbooking paper? Has anybody done that? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But sometimes your kids don't always do... <laughs> <laughs> the right colors for the season and so that's okay now this is a two and a half inch tall piece of cardstock and I want to have it centered on my page and so I'm going to come to my six inch line here and I'm going to measure down one and a quarter inches from the center which is half the width of this and then I'm also going to line up my ruler so that it's got my inch so it's on inches. We got a solid inch there and a solid inch there because it's going to come one inch in from the end on each side and follow along that ruler. Now when I put that adhesive on the back, you may have noticed that I kept my adhesive towards the center. And that's because we're going to add a whole bunch of banners to this um, layout. So we are going to bring in a whole bunch of pieces of pattern paper. As you can see me just filling them in here. And these pattern papers are cut to two and a half by two and a half inches. Just trying to grab the last one. And we're going to dovetail them. So let me start with the top. Now the top ones, I have to remember to dovetail the top. <laughs> Allison says she's guilty. She has totally taken her kids somewhere and dressed them according to her paper. So we're going to snip right in the center. Then we're going to come in from the side to the top of that snip, just like that. And then we're going to come from the other corner to the top of the snip, like that. And if we're happy with how we cut that dovetail, then we want to use that piece as a pattern for all the rest of our pieces. So we're gonna take our next piece, remembering to snip it at the top, helps if they line up. We're gonna snip it in the center, and then we're gonna come in from the side, and in from this side, like that. Now, don't put this one down and use this one as your next pattern. You want to continue going back to the first one because if you um, keep using the one that you just cut, your angles are going to change over time, right? Because you're cutting against this one, not directly on top of this one. So it's it would end up kind of being like our layout or card tags <laughs> where you start with one inspiration by the time you get to the end, it's completely different. And that's really fun when you're doing a layout tag or a card tag. Not so much fun when you're trying to make them things look all the same. So there we go. And then the next one, you're going to be very good at cutting dovetails once you've done a layout like this. Now, we need to remember this time we're cutting our dovetails on the bottom. Just like that. Snippity doo dah. And you'll notice that I'm not um, following my paper from side to side. Um, I'll show you what I mean in a second. You would have a tendency to take your piece of paper, line it up, and say, I've already got my angle on here. I'm just going to trim here and then here, and it will be wonky. It's always better, even though you've already got a guide, to snip in the center and go from this side, just like you did from the very first one. Always maintain that method, and your dovetails will look 
all the happier for it. Okay, just a couple more to go. I love this stripey one because it's got all the pretty colors. And there we go. So this is actually a fun layout to do when you've got just a few little pieces left. I was actually going to do this layout with a different paper collection. I was going to use the Cozy Up, but I was going to have to create so many pieces of Franken paper to do it that I thought, you know what, I'll just do it with the Gnomes for Autumn paper because we haven't shown that one yet, this crop, and then I don't have to make Franken paper. I can just go ahead and use the nice, lovely pieces that I have. All right, so there we go. Got all our little bits there. Scooch those off to the side. And now I can go ahead and adhere these. And you don't have to do a lot of adhesive on these, okay? I'm just telling you right now, it's not imperative that you um, in, uh, adhere them to the nth degree. So I just see my back paper has shifted. We're going to just tuck them ever so slightly under the paper there and then stick them down. <laughs> Gotta pick up my paper. And we'll move along to the next. Now I'm only adding one little bit of adhesive and that's perfectly fine. It's gonna go in a page protector. It's not gonna fall off. And we can just line that up to the next one. I think this is super cute. Are you loving these patterns? I know I am. Who doesn't like the fall? Well, I guess some of you might live in places where there's not a lot of fall. And that's okay, too. But the fall is a super good time. <laughs> My favorite weather is in the fall. All the lovely colors and the leaves and the pumpkin everything. And we'll just tuck that one right under there like that. And then let's come down to the bottom. I like this little sweater. So cute. Sweater weather. One of the stickers on the layout on the sticker sheet says sweater weather. All right, there we go. Tucking this one under. Hopefully keeping it straight. And you will notice that some of the patterns are carried across from the top to the bottom, but they're not in the same place. And some of them are not carried from the top to the bottom. So you can totally mix and match. You could even stamp some paper with your stamps if you wanted, you know, just sunflowers or pies. You know, you could use those stamps to create your own paper pattern own pattern paper and it would be lovely and the last melon <laughs> yeah, has anybody ever watched um, Ice Age with the last melon yeah I say that a lot around our house the last melon all right there we go and now but wait there's more we are going to add in a whole bunch of cardstock pieces, blah, blah, blah. and we are going to dovetail those. And these have been cut to random sizes. This one is like an inch and three eighths, and we're just going to dovetail it. I'm going to do it off to the side here so I don't leave little snippies all over my layout. I think you can still see me over here. We're going to use the same method for doing the dovetailing. And we're just going to, this one is a half inch by like an inch and three quarters, but it's not essential. I just cut, I just went through my scrap paper bin and pulled out the coordinating cardstock colors. So we've got Scarlet and Espresso. Here's some pumpkin. Just all random sizes. We're just going to make like a bounty of little dovetail banners. This layout is all about the banners. Great for using up all those little bits in your scrap bin because it's just random. However they come out, that's what you got. <laughs> Easy peasy. A little bit of limeade. Snippity snip. There we 
we go. More espresso. Snippity snip. I could have snipped some of these beforehand, couldn't I have? That would have been good, but I didn't. So here we are. And I believe I used the true color side for all of these cardstocks. Okay, and then, but wait, there's more. I've got them here on a piece of cardstock. We're going to have some of these up at the top, too. We wouldn't want to leave out the top. And, but we're going to do it on opposite sides. So we're using bottom versus top, left versus right. There's some limeade. Now on to some pumpkin. Does anybody do um, um, layouts where they just repeat a same shape over and over again? It's a very effective tool. It makes things look cohesive, even things that are different uh, patterns, different colors. It looks very cohesive when you have a similar shape over and over again, just a repeated shape. And there we go. Some honey butter. And while I have these cut to different lengths, I may adjust them by shoving more of them under my cardstock. If I want to make them shorter, I just stick them further under. <laughs> That's the benefit of having that little bit of space before I've got the adhesive going, right? So let's go ahead and add some adhesive to these. I might actually grab my glue for this. So let's tuck some under. Tuck, tuck, tuck. See if we can't make them straight. Where's my glue? Let's do glue. It might be quicker than peeling off the backings. Let's add some glue to this one. Once I get the glue down. There we go. We can even overlap some of these. Let's grab our limeade. Like so. And this little guy. He can go on top. Lots of fun layering up all of our pieces. Different lengths. Just like that. Love it. Nice long one. Let's add this limeade one on top. Sorry, it got quiet there for a second. I'm thinking and sticking. <laughs> totally lost my train of thought. All right, let's add some up here now, too. A little bit of honey butter. I guess we'll start near the edge like we did on the bottom. Make it a little bit samesy. There we go. And how about this long guy here? I'm trying to grab him. Can't grab him. There we go. Tuck him under there like that. Let's stick this one on top. Like that. And a little bit of limeade. So fun. And then the pumpkin. And there we go. That was definitely quicker with the liquid glue. Here we go. Alrighty. Now we have uh, a need for a title on here. So let's grab our um, sticker sheet for this. And I think that I am going to use this nice big thankful because we're thinking about Thanksgiving here with our layout. And we can go ahead and just stick that down here like so. I'm actually going to come just slightly above the edge of the cardstock there. We've got thankful. Then we have all of our gorgeous things that we have colored up. And that one's crooked. That's all right. Give it a little, give it a little adjustment. And so we can add in our... Um, 
lovely die cuts. Just going to take a look and see where they're going to where they're going to shine. Let's put one there. Maybe a little one beside it. We can even tuck one up here behind there like that. Maybe one down here coming in the top like so. We've got little mushrooms. Look at that. Little mushrooms. We can tuck those in there. We can even tuck a mushroom up here if we want. Like that. Then we've got leaves. So many things. We got some little leaves. Let's put some leaves on there. I think we might even tuck another sunflower up there. So pretty. We don't need to use everything. You know, we got a little excited with the embellishments. <laughs> Anna wanted. Got a little excited. Painting up all these lovely embellishments. And that's okay. We can get excited about things, right? So let's tuck <coughs> just a couple more. Maybe one of these little green guys. We'll tuck him in there. And I think that that's enough. We can, <laughs> we can stop there. Let's grab our glue. And starting from the back, we can add our embellishments. So fun. This little guy. Tuck him under there. Nice. And this guy will maybe add some foam tape. Let me just grab my scissors. Give him a little snippy do of foam tape behind him. And maybe this little sunflower needs a little snippy do. And these little guys can get glued down as well. Whenever you're gluing things down, it's good to start with the back layer first and work your way towards the front. That way that the front things have a spot to sit. You're not trying to always tuck, um, tuck things underneath them and they can get stuck down. There we go. Loving that. And our little sunflower is going to come and hang out here. And this little guy, little mushrooms. I don't know about you, I like mushrooms. So my mushrooms are happy to hang out there. All right, let's come down here to the bottom. I'm going to add some foam tape to these. And I like the fact that we are not sticking these down entirely. And when I add embellishments, I quite often do not stick them down entirely because I like the edges being able to magically lift without me having to add anything in particular to make them do that. They just do it on their own. And tuck that under there. Then we've got this little guy. We'll stick him down kind of under the edge there. Add a little bit of foam on our leaf. I'm actually going to cut that foam in half. And put half on you and half on you. Because it's nice wide foam tape. There we go. I'm going to tuck that. Kind of like that. And put this one kind of like that. And we'll glue this one down. Look at that! All those fun embellishments just from a little bit of stamping, a little bit of ink, a little bit of water. So many fun things on there. Then let's add a little bit of a border. And if you noticed on this sticker sheet, we have border stickers. Look at this. Woo! right off like that. Pop them on the bottom. Lovely. And then let's take this one. Whoop. I don't even need to glue it. It's a sticker. 
I'm going to actually turn my whole page around just to make y'all dizzy because I'll never line it up properly from the other side. And line it up along the top like that. Spin the world around again. I think that is super cute. Let me see if we're still in the frame. Moving it up a little bit. Moving it up a little bit. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing this come together. We started with our base page of White Daisy cardstock. We added that beautiful new acorn paper in there as our matting for our photos. And then um, going for originally a two and a half inch photo, but cutting this one down a little bit so I can accommodate for this little wider one. Then all the gorgeous pattern papers from this Gnomes for All Seasons Autumn Collection, the beautiful stamp set from the collection with all those fun um, embellishments. And you know what? We used a lot of embellishments. We've got pumpkins. We've got sunflowers. We've got leaves. We've got mushrooms. But we kept all of that beautiful um, ink and water painting in the same limited number of colors and they all have the same look and feel and that kind of allows us to have a lot more embellishments going on there than we would normally have if they were all very bold or different colors it would be overwhelming but because they're very much the same they just sort of sit all together in a nice little cluster and then of course we've got our dovetailed patterns along with our cardstock patterns to kind of give a little bit of blank space, resting space from all of the, the busy patterns and busy embellishments. But then we also have our white space and white space or blank negative space on a layout is really good too. Not only that, we can add a nice little journaling spot up here. Um, so this is a nice area or down here, but I think this is the better spot. So I can tuck a little piece of journaling. I could even have it as hidden journaling and tuck it in behind. Lots of places we could journal. We could even journal all the way around the edge if we wanted. But don't underestimate the importance of white blank space on a layout. It really gives your eye room to rest, but also focuses you in on what's important, which are these photos. So I hope you guys enjoyed seeing this come together. And I will um, put some photos of this online. And if you create a layout like this, I would love to see what you create. So just snap a picture and add it to the comments. And once again, this inspiration was from a layout uh, posted by Allison Davis. All right. Have a wonderful rest of the afternoon. And we'll be back on at 7 o'clock for Chat and Craft. And, and uh, I'll be making an announcement about this. But we're giving everybody an extra day to finish up artwork and gameplay and things like that because this is a holiday weekend in Canada. So Monday is a holiday. So we're going to allow everybody until Monday night to finish things up and then we'll be doing the prize draws and everything on Tuesday. All right. Have a wonderful rest of the afternoon. Toodaloo. Bye.